Hello and welcome to the Fishing Guide Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Weekman, and we are down in Mississippi, but you know what? We're going to pull a little trick on them. We're going to talk to someone who's a guide in uh, Oklahoma. Yes, sir. And so, Michael Meeks. Michael, uh, tell them a little bit about yourself. I'm from uh, Lawton, Oklahoma, originally. I always fished Lake Ellsworth with my grandfather, and I decided to go full-time, so I packed up everything, quit my job, and moved to northeast Oklahoma, and... Uh, been pretty good since then everything's been going good so what lakes do you guide on in oklahoma Ulaga mainly uh hudson if somebody really just wants to go there uh-huh but yeah Ulaga and hudson you're a crappie guide yes sir crappie. right do you do anything else just crappie spoonbill if somebody requests it yeah okay we kind of chase them and try to snag them and hold right. on for the fight oh well, there you go we didn't wear them out dragging them behind the boat so they're fresh they're you're gonna have to hold on <laughs> Let's talk about crappie fishing in uh, Oklahoma in general. Just tell us a little bit, um, knowingly that this could air in a month or so or right. somewhere in there. Uh, let's talk about uh, where you fish. Talk about that reservoir. Okay, Ulaga is a very big lake, so you got very <laughs> unlimited places to fish. But, uh-huh. you know, in the summer, in the heat, you want to stay up north with sh- shallower water. There'll be bigger right. fish around. Uh, like right now, middle of the lake. Every brush pile has got 100 fish on it. Wow. Some don't want to eat, some do. So if they don't want to eat, just move on to the next one because you're just wasting time. And really, as it gets warmer, they get into that shallower water. They're going to then? move up. That's yeah. they're crazy. Right, they're right off the edge. Like, you got shore, 20 feet, there's all the fish. I got gotcha. But it's still 25 foot deep or so, you know. Oh, I see. So they're we're ready to go off into the channels and into the creeks. And uh-huh. Some of them are in the creeks already, but they're not pushed up all the way. They're still staged out. So, uh, what's your method of catching them? I saw your boat outside there. What's, tell us a little bit. Are you a uh, spider rigging or no, one pole? No, I'm the live scope guy. So, all right. If I'm fishing me by myself, I chase them around one at a time. With right. clients, normally we spot lock, switch to a different transducer. Right. Where they can just work the brush pile one fish after the next. You know. Let's talk about that setup that you have on the front of your boat and right. having a separate um, pole. Right. to uh to see them in live scope it definitely matters which style fishing you're doing which pole do you have i have a sea light 2.0 right. yeah okay there, yeah. there you go just there throw it go. right out there, there. Go. it's so. a good mount if you want to move fast and not mess with stuff it's the one to go turn two screws flip it right turn them and run there you go talk about the back end of your boat yeah i got two sets of trolling motors that's to back up or stop or just slow down whatever you need to do so if you're chasing that single fish right and ever, you know, we're all in a hurry to get him, so we move a little too fast. Right. You just touch that little button, and it'll. So kind of like up. a dimmer switch if you're old. A right. dimmer switch in the car. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, an on-off switch that's on the on the bottom of the thing, and so you're you're you put the trolling motors down on yours. Yeah. You put you them. Do. You put them in uh-huh. manually because I didn't want to waste any money. Right. And then uh, it's all wired where it's it's on, but right. not until you touch the button, and they're mm-hmm. just whatever setting you have them on some that, guys just wire them direct but i still have my controls basically online. crappie breaks but, it, it's crappie but breaks, it's not but homemade yeah. crappie stoppers i yeah, guess yeah. we should call them because that's what they should be because now it's, it's you can stop and back up if, right if you wanted to uh-huh. and tell them how critical that is because presentation when it comes to crappie and looking at them that's the whole it's actually changing things. i yeah. i said crappie breaks i said those were going to revolutionize. So power poles were when power poles came out right. that actually changed fishing, especially in the bass world. Sure. But crappie breaks are actually going to going to change yeah. not only the crappie world. It's the bass fishermen are going to the lights are going off in their heads they're and they're going. They drop shot a lot, right? Drop shot, or if they're in the in the Great Lakes, the only part of their boat that's usually in the water is the back. Right. And so they'll literally be able to hold on some of those. Yeah. When, yeah. you know, little waves, three and four footers. Oh, yeah. Or if you want to stop the boat splash. <laughs> right. You know how your boat splashes mm-hmm. on your boat? Well, you can flip around now and right. fish with the wind and just keep tapping to slow yeah. you down. So you're over there by Tulsa, yes, right? Sir. What's the distance from Tulsa to oh, the lake you're fishing? 40 miles, probably. Yeah. 40 miles. Somewhere in that range. Right. So how many square acres is that? Oh, gosh. It's 40 miles long. It's 40 miles long? Three. Yep. 30,000 acres, yeah. We have some people in the background. They're helping us yeah, out he today. Knows exactly there we got people the in the crowd yeah. that are 
<laughs> Cook's back there. He's going to do the next podcast yes, show. Sir. So we might, you might throw some things out to him. Oh, too. I will. I'm going to get him. Yeah. So you're one pulling. Tell us about your setup. Rods, reels, H and H rods and reels. I use a 13 and a half foot war pig from Frank Hidesack. Uh, okay. Clients, I usually give them a 12 because the longer they are, the harder they are to use. Now, if you're experienced right. fisherman, uh -huh. sure, we'll get the long rod out for you. But in the beginning, you better to start a little shorter. Yeah. Don't go too long, too fast. Right. Now let's go with your reel. I use Fine. That, I use the H and H reel, the one fifty series. I use twenty pound canine or twenty pound uh vicious, either okay. one. Okay. And what are you using good. what are you using for lures to catch these for tiny hand ties, jigs and uh snacky lures and I get all my heads from Big Daddy's lures. All right. So uh, Tiny, talk a little bit about his lures because you just kind of skipped through this part. <laughs> I tell you what, even guides want to skip the part where you, the tell important thing, they, they don't want to tell you what <laughs> lures they're using. He barely tells us what like. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, tell us about the lures. Why is it he, special while you're using them? The hand ties, I think it just resembles a natural insect or something more, uh -huh. I think. And, you know, the, the plastics are solid and they look more like a minnow. But, right. you know, if it's the time of year where bugs are dropping out the trees, why not go with something that looks like a little bug, you know, because they're right. going to be eating that anyway. And size of jig heads, which it, ones are you usually going with? 90% of the time, it's a 16th ounce or okay. a 30 wow. second. Uh, sometimes, if I'm really trying to move fast, I'll go a little heavier, but normally I just put a bigger weight above it. Okay, so you're using bigger, a split shot or something above uh, it? Or are you a, using a, a barrel weight. Barrel weight down to it. a yeah. Oh, I'll, you just peg it. I got it? three quarters of an ounce barrel weight on my rod right now. Right. That's so I can go really fast and it'll keep up with you. Mm -hmm. And That's you're just pegging it with a toothpick, or are you using a, <laughs> a swivel? Yeah, we got two thing. two beads and uh -huh. bobber stops. Oh, all right. And if you put a yep. really heavy barrel weight, put two bobber stops to blow it because you yep. just make it go down every time you set the hook. Anyway. Yeah. We were at Reed Foot Lake. That was real popular there right. at Reed, Reed Foot Lake. Some of the guys were uh, doing that right. and uh, using the stops like that. Yeah. Tell them the advantage of using bobber stops instead of using a swivel. Uh, I don't know about the biggest advantage, but between the barrel weight and the split shot is you're not crimping your line, damaging it, and then when you catch a big fish, it snaps. Right. You know, Every time you put that lead on there with the pliers, you're taking a chance of causing some damage. Right. So that's why I use the barrel weight, so I don't damage anything. All right. So tell us, uh, so that reservoir, is it, does it have lots of brush in it? Uligog, right? Yeah. That's the one. It does have brush. Uh-huh. I wouldn't call it, like, full of brush. But if you go uh -huh. to the north side, there's lots of standing timber and stuff. But there is okay. lots of brush on the banks. Right. But, you know, Oklahoma's not, there's no natural lakes, so they're all full of stuff. Right. <laughs> when they flooded them, whatever was there. Got flooded. I see. So uh, tell us a little bit more about it. Just a normal guide trip. You Where do you meet them at? Usually uh, what ramp? Spencer Creek Boat Ramp is where okay. we normally meet. It's right in the middle. No matter which way we want to go, it's easy to just head either direction, you know. Is that a Corps of Engineer Lake or is, is that a water it's supply a lake? Corps, Corps, yeah. Because uh -huh, they do have water supply lakes in that Tulsa area. Yeah, Uchi and uh, Spavinall are the Tulsa okay. drinking water. You don't take anyone out there? Because I know there's fish in there. I've been there. And caught they are monster before. black crappie in there. But uh -huh. getting one, they bite something is a whole different deal. You can see <laughs> 30 bigger, feet huh? deep, and uh, they know you're there before you even know they were there. Right. They're not going to eat nothing. Tell now, us I do know a guy that went with an A-rig, and he wore them things out. Now, right. I haven't gone to try to replicate it, but he, wow. he caught over 20 two-pounders on A-rig. Wow. When nobody else could catch anything. Wow. Maybe they just see the school and naturally just go for it. I don't know. They might. They might, what, yeah. What is, um, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, your live scope. How do you have your live scope set? How many feet out? Are you changing the range? Tell us how you set it up so that you're able to see the fish. keep it at 40. 40? I run a 126, and I keep it okay. at 40 and 30 down. And I don't adjust it much because I know exactly what those fish look like at that size. So, like, if right. you shorten your anything up, the fish get bigger. So, mm -hmm. now that six-inch crappie looks like the two-pound crappie you caught last week, and you're going to chase him around all day for nothing. Right. And then I have a 32 transducer on the 
trolling motor and a right. 34 on a pole. Right. So if I'm chasing fish by myself or with an experienced client, we're on the transducer on the trolling motor. Okay. Amateurs or anybody, kids, kids love it. You just right. spot lock, switch it to the pole, get over a brush pile. They, the boat doesn't move. They can watch everything happen however they need to do it. They can learn real slow and just catch fish. So that's the uh, the only method you don't you don't spider rig, huh? No, nope, break Oklahoma, them out? Oklahoma. We don't spider rig much. Oh. No, never even seen it till somebody showed it to me down here. Oh, really? Yeah, nobody does it up there. Now mm. we troll a lot, pull crank baits oh. a lot. Oh, you pull crank baits? Right. We do you do that pushed. with clients? Or yes, not? sir. Yes, sir. Oh, you do. Just, so you push. Mm-hmm. Certain times of year when they're all spread out. Right. That's the best way. To like in catch. summer. Yeah. Summertime. If you're not going of... for really big fish, sure. Right. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, if it floods or even spawn time, you know, they'll pull out right. males or females will be moving around. If you just go through them with a curtain of jigs or crankbaits, you got to get something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a numbers right. game. You know, you put enough right. baits out there and cover enough water, something's going to eat it. Well, that's good when you yeah. get. How many people do you normally take in your boat? I like to do one or two, but right. I'll take three. Kids always fish free, 12 and under. Okay. We just pay for one adult, bring two kids, and we'll go have a blast. There you go. And, uh, well, you know, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. Oh, is there more white crappie or black crappie? Definitely more white crappie, yeah. Okay. Unless you get over to the rivers now. Uh-huh. The, uh, Neosho River, Grand Lake, Hudson. You can find some good black crappie in there. Now, you'll catch right. a black crappie in Ulaga, but you might catch one black and 50 whites, you know. Let's give them a couple tips on catching crappie using live scope. That you've seen over the years as a guide, like something that you've seen and said, hey, if you do this, you're going to catch more fish. If you do this, you're going to catch a lot more fish. Okay. okay, biggest thing I could say that I've noticed, if you can get that bait to hold still, they will smash it. Uh-huh. Now it's hard to do, you know, the boat's rocking, everything's moving. Right. But when you can get it to hold still, a lot of times they will hit it. Okay. And if they won't, you know, just a slight little jiggle, you'll see it on the live scope. When you see it sitting still and you present a bait and you see something happen to that fish, it gets a little distorted, he right. saw it. He jiggled a little bit and he's about to get you. Or if he's coming, just raise real slow. Some people say to stop and eat it. I just right. keep going and make yeah. them chase it down. Just keep going until yeah. they turn. Real and then, slow. They'll either eat it or not, you know. Right. But if they're coming up after it, I want to move it a little bit, like natural instinct to run away, you know. Mm-hmm. So no tell us. fish is going to just sit there and let it get eaten. That's right. That's <laughs> right. So tell us, uh, what's the limit of a crappie? We know that it's crazy. It's Oklahoma. It's Oklahoma. You Okies can only count so many times. So <laughs> On Ulaga, it's 37 a person. Yeah, 37. And it's. <laughs> not impossible to get two limits it happens so someone could count to 54 when they did that huh 74 yes oh, 74 yeah. look at that yeah well that's a lot you got of to fish. know your numbers up there you'll get in big trouble <laughs> <laughs> there you go so uh that takes us to tackle time tackle time is uh sponsored by pico lures pico lures has a complete line of hard and soft baits they even have lures that will catch a bunch of oklahoma crappie i hear and uh so you can check them out uh but actually they have soft plastic things that you want to catch uh, bass fishing crappie walleye about any game fish that you have uh what they have will catch we were trolling today with some pico lures down here in mississippi on lake washington catching uh we ca- actually caught um nine good crappie out there today good so. ones y'all got Really so good. that was good. Cut cut some of them on the brand new colors. James is over there, Callaway. I give him the 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 peak because uh, we went in his boat, and so we caught some on uh, on the new colors. So we're pretty excited awesome. about that having having people using them. Make so, sure they work. You got that's know right. They work. Yeah, you got to test them out. Yeah, you that's a have heck of confidence, a, man. It's a heck of a job to have to. It do don't matter that. what you're using. If you believe in it, it's going to work better. That's right. So uh, you can check them out at uh, picolures.com. If they want to find out more, Michael, Michael Meeks is his name. If you want to find out more uh, about you, where would they go? Social media, website? You can go to Facebook at Slab and Mike's Crappie Fishing and Guide Service or Slab and Mike's Guide Service.com or just call me at 405-420-7868 and we'll get you taken care of. There you go. There you have it from uh, an Oklahoma guy that's down here in Mississippi. So, yes, uh, sir. Good stuff. Uh, like I always like to end the show, make sure you keep your hook sharp and your lures in the water. <laughs> <laughs>